Hey guys, this is Craig Michalaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are HVAC thermal safety sensors or safety switches. So each of these are a little bit different. I'm going to take you in for an up close image of each of these. I'm going to show you how to read the ratings on them, and I'm also going to go over troubleshooting. So these sensors right here are normally closed, and I'm going to show you why, and then they open on a temporize and they shut back down. So they're an automatic switch that is able to reset. These right here are flame rollout sensors and they have a little safety switch so they're manually resettable. And this one right here, these are just sensors that are going to stay closed and then they're going to open on a temporize. Here you have a defrost temp sensor. Here you have a thermal fuse. Here you have an adjustable temperature sensor. These sensors right here are normally open and then they close on a temperature rise. Here you have a thermal limit sensor for a furnace and then this actually goes into like so this part right here goes into the heat exchanger area and it's going to read the temperature more towards the inside of the furnace. Right here you have your your safety sensor for on top of a rotary compressor that's just one type of them they make other types as well and here you have a fan limit control. So there's a bunch of different varieties of what you're going to run into here, but I just want to take you in for an up-close image of how they work. I'm going to go over the troubleshooting. So you see that this one's open, this one's open, and this one's open. So as we pass through each of these components, I'll show you how they work. I want to take this opportunity just to let you know that we have our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning paperback and ebook, both available over at acservicetech.com. This paperback is available over at amazon.com. So I want to show you how to quickly tell the difference between a switch that has normally closed contacts that is going to open on a temperature rise, and that's an L in the front of the number, and F in the front of the number. That means that the switch is normally open and it's going to close on a temperature rise. So that's how you tell the difference between the two different types of switches. It's just a letter in the front. If for whatever reason the switch did not have its temperature readings, you can then just look it up by the model number and you can typically find that and then you can determine what the switch is supposed to do. So here we have our normally closed thermal safety switches and they're going to open on the temporize. So between here and here, you see that this one says L145 minus 40 and that means that these connections are going to be closed which means you should be reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance when testing the resistance across this switch unless the contacts are pitted. So it's going to be closed until the temperature rises up above 145 degrees. After that these connections are going to open up. Now these connections will not close again until you minus 40 degrees off of 145 degrees. So these connections are not going to close again until you get down to 105 degrees. Now each of these are different temperatures and so you want to make sure that if you're replacing one of these switches that you're replacing it with the exact same uh, temperature ratings. So this one is normally closed until you get up to 160. Then it's going to open up the electrical connections until the temperature on this sensor right here falls back down to 110 degrees. And the reason for that is it's 160 minus 50, and once it gets down below 110 degrees, these connections will close again. So this one's a little hard to read, but it actually says 240 minus 20 down on the bottom here. So that one's a higher temperature sensor. So the manufacturers determine where they want to have this installed at, and this is typically used uh, around electric strip heating, but can be used for other uh, purposes as well. This one has two switches on the inside and they are in series. The one is at 250 degrees and the other one is at 140 degrees. So the 250 is the limit and the 140 is the automatic reset. So if you go above 140, it will open up. If it's below 140, it'll be closed. And this is a normally closed switch. So here we have our up close image and you can see a little rod, little black rod in the middle and you see our contacts. Now, I actually bent this up so it is normally closed down like this. So your contact is from here to, to this piece right down there. So it's normally going to sit like this. And what's going to happen is if this disc over here heats up, it's going to pop that little inside rod up and the contact is no longer going to be able to make its connection over on the right hand side. So it's like this. It heats up, it opens it up, it cools down and it closes again. 
So that's how this one works. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you for a image of the multimeter testing the resistance value of one of these switches. So you see that we're reading 0.1 ohms of resistance and that might just be due to the connections at the alligator clips, but you should be reading very close to 0.0, .0 ohms of resistance. So what will happen is if I were to press inwards on this, we're then going to read OL. I'm going to let back up on that switch and you see that we're reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. Now you don't want to do that, like press inwards with the switches because you're going to mess the temperature readings up and some of them are actually protected. This one's not protected because you can, you can see where the sensor is there. So we're at 0, 0.0. Anytime I put a little pressure on this, I don't even have to press inwards all the way. We're losing our connection. So you can see how that works. Now you see that we're reading OL right here, and that means that these connections are not touching between here and here. And, and that's not because this safety sensor is broken. This is actually a normally open switch. So this type of switch is going to close on a temperature rise. So this one is not going to close these electrical connections until the switch reaches a, above 110 degrees. And then when it's cooling down, it's not going to open up the electrical circuit again until it gets down below 90 degrees because it's 110 minus 20 equals 90 degrees. So this could be used to control, say, a blower motor for a startup of a heater or something like that in order to make sure that once the heat gets up to temperature, your blower motor turns on. So here's a uh, image of the inside. And you see that on this one, I took the cover off and I'll take you a little closer here. So here you can see the rod in the middle and this little spring right here is going to have tension downwards and you see that this connection is open right now. So also this little bimetal disc right here is inwards. It's been inwards. So what's going to happen is when this heats up, it's going to pop outwards. That rod's going to go in and then you're going to have your connection. It's going to touch. So it's normally like this. And then once it gets above 110 degrees, it's going to then close. And that's how this one works. So I just want to show you that this is inwards and this is what would happen. It's going to pop outwards when it heats up. When it pops outwards, this rod goes in and that's how that electrical connection touches. So for this switch, you would actually have to have a temperature sensor reading the temperature where this is located at. And what you're going to do is you're going to disconnect your, your wires coming across here and you would end up testing the resistance value of the switch. Now you could also test it with the voltage going across the switch if you have voltage on one side and you're waiting for the voltage to go across the switch to the other side. This is just a simple method, but you can just take this one screw out, put your temperature B temperature sensor in, say if it's, uh, if it's inside of a furnace, and you're going to read the temperature, make sure the temperature is above 110 degrees, so maybe 120, and while it's at 120, you should have 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance across this switch. So that's how you would know if this switch was good. And if you did not have this switch close on a temperature rise, then you know that this switch is bad. But right now, it should be reading OL, oh well, because the temperature in this room right now is below 110 degrees. Here you see a smaller type of thermal safety switch or, or limit sensor. And you see that we're reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance across the electrical connections. So, so that is connected right now inside. This disc is faced outwards in the middle. And so if I were to press it inwards, we're going to read OL. Oh well. And that's because that would be as if the, the temperature was rising and past the, the point in which it opens up. And so the sensor inside opens the connection. So you have like a little rod inside I'll show you. Right here you see that little rod. So that little rod when you press inwards it's going to make the switch read OL. Oh well. And when it's up you should be reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. So in order to get at this you see that we took this little aluminum plate off. So they're trying to protect that that little sensor. All this stuff is very precise because they have different temperature measurements and you really want to be careful not to be pressing inwards on that on a functioning sensor. This one's an automatic reset and this one's a manual reset. The manual reset are typically used 
near the combustion chamber of a furnace. And that would be as if the flame came back at the sensor and then this would trip. So that would be something that you wouldn't want it to automatically reset. You would want it only to manual reset when a technician's there. So you can see the, the button on that one. So here you have two of the thermal safety limits and this one is 230 minus 30. And this one says 165 minus 65. So this one is normally closed until it reaches up above 165 degrees. And then it's gonna open up and then it's not going to close these connections again until after a cool down period in which it has to get down below 100 degrees. So it's 165 minus 65. So when it's below 100 degrees, then these connections will close again. Here you have an adjustable temperature limit switch. And this one right here is typically gonna be used for heating water. So you have A, B, C, D, E, and this is adjustable so you can adjust this dial. And each of these letters will be able to, uh, with the paperwork that comes with this, they're typically gonna tell you what temperature settings each of these letters refer to. On the, on the back here, it says L150 minus 20. So you're gonna have these electrical connections right here are gonna be closed until the temperature gets above 150, and then they're going to open up, and then they're not gonna close back down again until you get down to 130, so less than 130. But you can adjust when the normally closed contacts are gonna open up right here at the top. This is a micro temp thermal fuse, and it's going to read 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance across it when it's good, and it's gonna read OL when it's bad. This is non-resettable, and so anytime that this is in an environment where it's getting overheated, this is gonna open up and there's no way to just reset these. You have to replace this component after you figure out why the unit was overheating. So here you have a thermal limit switch for on the top of a rotary compressor. A lot of times though, they look like this and they're called a compressor protector. And there'll be a little tiny heater like this underneath of the thermo disc. So this is another one. You're gonna have 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance across this contact. It's gonna be normally closed. And on this one, you're gonna have 0.1 usually because of this little, little tiny heater down here. But you wanna make sure that you're not reading OL oh well after these sensors have had a chance to cool down. Here's a type that will go inside of a furnace. This one right here is L250 minus 40. Here you have L180 minus 40. So you really, really need to make sure that you're replacing it with the right size. They're all different. See, this one right here is 200 minus 40. And here you have another one, and this is L220 minus 40. So it's gonna be closed electrical connections until it gets up above the higher number. And then it's gonna open up. It's not gonna close back down again until you minus off the, the second number right here. So this one won't close again until you get down below 180 degrees. So on this fan limit control, you have this in the heat exchanger area of a furnace. And this bimetal right here is going to heat up and it's going to turn. And when it turns, it's going to turn this in the front right here. So you have your, when your fan turns on as your second dial, your fan shuts off as your first dial, and this is your limit. So if the blower motor does not turn on, then it's going to open up these normally closed connections between here and here in order to shut off the, the gas ignition or the oil. So right now you see that we're reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance, and you wouldn't want to turn this too, too much, you know, in the field on a, on a, on a one that's installed on the system because you don't want to mess up the, the settings and the, and the bimetal. But basically what happens is as this turns, you see that second click right there, that was your limit switch. So then you're reading OL. Oh well. So it's no longer connecting these two connections here and here. So you see now it's connected, now it's not, and that would be as if this, this temperature right here had reached above 180 degrees. So you'll have multiple clicks here, and the one will be when the blower motor turns on, and the second click will be when the blower motor shuts off. The, the click that's all the way up here is your limit. So that's how your, your fan limit control works. Here we have our defrost temperature sensor and it usually clamps around the copper tube and that will be a 3 8 OD copper tube and it's located at the outdoor heat pump fins. And on this we have a L80 minus, minus 50. 
So it's hard to see because you have that stainless steel clip right there. But right now it's open because the last time it actually went through defrost, it went above 80 degrees and it's not going to close back down again until it minuses 50 degrees off of it and needs to get down below 30 degrees in order for, for this right here to close the connections between here and here. So this is used in conjunction with a, a defrost control board in order to run defrost on a heat pump when the outdoor fins are frozen. So I just want to take this opportunity again, check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning paperback and ebook, both available at our website at acservicetech.com. So you can check out the full outline and see what it's all about. And basically we're going over all the preparation steps in order to get a system ready for a refrigerant and it's all laid out step by step. We're going over checking the refrigerant charge, troubleshooting, we're using superheat, subcoin, delta T, saturated temperatures. So we're going over all that in this book right here. So. We go over a troubleshooting guide in order to help you troubleshoot what the problem is. Say it's a low airflow issue or it's a liquid line restriction, low refrigerant charge, overcharged, all those different types of scenarios. So this paperback is also available over at Amazon.com and check this out. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.